हेलो एवरी वन इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी टॉक अबाउट नेल्सन मंडेला हु फ्रीड हु लिबरेटेड द पीपल ऑफ साउथ अफ्रीका फ्रॉम द इन ह्यूमन सिस्टम ऑफ सेग्रीगेशन और अ सेपरेशन विच वॉज बेस्ड ऑन द स्किन कलर ऑफ द पीपल विच आफ्रीकन पीपल कॉल्ड अपार्थाइड we humans have power to communicate to others we can negotiate with each other even this mandela demolish this apartheid system through the negotiation only but what about the animals if they are caged if they are in prison how they can protest themselves they can't talk for their own sake they cannot defend themselves only one option left for them that is to bear this agony or this dilemma is well expressed in this poem a tiger in the zoo which is written by george lesler norris who explains the agony or a helplessness of a caged tiger that lives in a zoo The poet explains what his life could be if he had been a free animal. The poet had tried to explain about the condition of animals that are caged by human beings for their own fun. Before we start the poem, let's be familiar with the poet first. who is george leslie norris and he was born in 1921 and he died in 2006 he was a prize winning welsh poet and a short story writer he is considered as the most important welsh writer of the post war period and his literary works have won many prizes His famous works are Finding Gold, The Loud Winter, Phoenix Living Poet Series and Ransom etc. So this kind of works he has written and he was uh, one of most important flesh writer of the post war era. Moving further let's start the poetry. he walks in his vivid stripes i'm just reading first he walks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage let's see the line by line explanation and the meaning he stalks stalks means to follow to uh, walk from here and there from one place one uh, place to another place okay that means stalks he stalks to pace right he is talking he is walking in his vivid stripes vivid that means very bright colored so a tiger has a very bright colored stripes over his body so he is walking in his vivid stripes now first thing the uh, the word comes to in our mind that is he why the tiger is uh, why the poet has used he instead of it here the poet has used uh, personification he personified tiger as a human being he has given the quality of human being and that is the reason the tiger is talking the tiger is moving the tiger is walking from one end to another end so the tiger is talking in his vivid stripes in his vivid bright colored stripes the few steps of his cage now where he is talking he is talking he is talking in his cage and he is he has taken a few steps only because the space of the cage is very limited he can't walk more 
right so he has a very few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quite pads that is a pose of tiger right so on pads of velvet now velvet is a fabric it's a very soft smooth shining uh, fabric right cloth material so the pads of tiger is very velvety it's very soft it's very shining and he's now look at this word quiet now he has a very soft and shining foot and very uh, soft and uh, shining pose and when he walks or when he stalks no voice comes out of it so he's his footsteps are noiseless he is not making any kind of voice while he was walking or a stalking in his quiet rage why he is talking in this cage because he is in this rage emotion rage that means anger he is very angry why he is angry because the tiger is under this bars the tiger is cage and that is the reason he is very angry and to quiet his rage to control his rage to control his anger what he is doing he is just talking he is pacing in this cage here in this first stanza poet says that the tiger is confined in the zoo the tiger is in the zoo and it is confined in the zoo and he moves around in the cage only and his bright colored with his bright color scheme right he even uh, this poet even further says that the tiger can take only a few steps because the cage is a very small and it is not easy to move in in it and one cannot hear his footsteps because he has very soft or velvety feet and that is the reason there is no sound of the tiger's footsteps the tiger tries to control his rage control his anger by quietly walking by quietly walking in this limited area of this cage he is angry because he is not free he is in this cage okay he should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass he should be lurking in shadow so poet is uh, saying the possibilities of the tiger if he should what kind of thing he should does instead of stalking in that particular cage what kind of movement he should does what kind of activity he should does first things that he should be lurking lurking that means to be hidden as to wait for prey so he should hiding himself in a shadow to wait for a prey he should be lurking in a shadow he should be lurking to some shadow he should be hiding somewhere sliding through long grass and from this long grass he should slide he should move further near the water holes where he should move further is where he should slide near the water holes water holes means any kind of water body whether it is a pond or a lake or a river any kind of water body so he should slide from this long grass and he should go near this water hole where plump deer pass plump that means bit uh, not skinny uh, not that much fat a uh, bit fat so where this plump deer pass he should go there 
he should hide in a shadow and from this from his hiding space he should slide through that long grass and go near that water hole and he should attack one of the plump deer who could pass there and from that attack from that he should hunt the uh, uh, this his prey and he should eat that prey okay now in this second stanza the poet says that uh, this tiger was if this tiger was free he would have hid himself behind the long grass if this tiger is free then he should have hid behind this long grass near the water bodies so that he could easily catch a deer in order to have it as its food basically the poet wants to say that the actual life of a tiger is to live in the jungle not in the cage where he could catch his prey and eat it but the tiger is in the cage and now he cannot do so okay next stanza he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village he should be snarling snarling that means warning sounds made by animals so he should give some warning sounds around houses where he should give this snarling or warning sounds around the houses and where are the houses they are at the jungle's edge jungle says that means outskirts of the forest okay so uh, uh, the houses which are located uh, uh, outside of this jungle area okay so he should be snarling he should be uh, he should given this uh, a uh, warning sound around that around the houses which are at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs and his claws now tiger has these white fangs white fangs that fangs that are the very sharp teeth right so he has a, this white fangs and his white claws and which help him to terrorize the village and he should does these kind of activities not just to uh, stalk in that particular space now in this stanza the poet says that if the tiger would have been free he would have snarled around the houses he, he would have give warning sounds around that houses which are located at the outskirts of the forest and he would terrorize the people with his sharp tooth with his claws with his fangs this would create fear among the people who are living in the villages so that kind of activity he would have done but now it is impossible for him as he is behind the bars okay but he is locked in a concrete cell now the poet comes in the reality that now what happens that but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors okay but he is locked in a concrete cell concrete which is a uh, concrete is a material okay building by, made by brick cement sand and water so he is behind this concrete cell uh, very firm and strong cell his strength behind bars whatever strength the tiger has and behind this bars behind this uh, cage behind under this cage under this zoo his strength 
is generally used in stalking he is using his strength in stalking only stalking the length of his cage he is using his strength in stalking the length of his cage he is just measuring he is just uh, measuring this cage with stalking and he ignores visitors ignoring visitors he is not paying attention to the visitor he is not terrorizing the visitors he is just simply stalking and if he does so if he even does uh, this snar snarling sounds or if he terrorize these visitors then also he could not attack them right because he is behind the bar he doesn't have freedom to go outside so waste of energy right so here in this stanza the poet uh, comes to the reality first and he says that now the tiger is in the cage and so he is confined in this strong cell which is made of a very strong building material concrete right he further says that as the tiger is behind bar so his ferociousness that means it's his wildness is also behind the bars he just stalks in his cage he never tries to terrorize the uh, visitors right and uh, because his power is restricted by the cage and therefore he never tries to terrorize the visitors as he cannot attack them so he is just ignoring those visit visitors next stanza he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars okay now what he does he hears the last voice at night so the tiger can hear the last voice at the night at the night what he does he hears the last voice which last voice the patrolling cars so the patrolling cars patrolling that means to guard or to vigil so the cars the patrolling cars the voice of this patrolling car he just simply listen this car's voice and stares with his brilliant eyes brilliant that means very uh, sparkling so he is just staring with his brilliant with his sparkling eyes what at what at the brilliant stars he is just staring with his eyes with the shining brilliant i uh, stars okay so in the last stanza the poet says that the in the night the tiger hears the sound of this patrolling car uh, patrolling cars are the vehicle of the police where, which are used to guard at night right so they are the uh, these car used to guards at the night so in the night the tiger hears the sounds of this patrolling car and he then stares at the shining stars why he is staring at this shining stars with his uh, shining eyes of course but why because tiger is very sad and as he is confined as he is locked in this cage so he cannot do anything and therefore he stares at the stars in the night and tries to divert his thoughts towards them okay so that's it okay as i talked earlier that uh, three kind of uh, question answer would come uh, based on the poetry right first that is the read the stanza and answer the question and you will get the stanza and uh, one mark question answer would be there and total two questions would be there second is that identify the figure of speech you will get the options but you have to identify and two marks of figure of speech would be there and it, it is very difficult uh, um if you haven't if you don't know the 
proper definition of the uh, figure of speech just do one thing uh, open your book note down each and every figure of speech line by line so at the last you just have to memorize all the things otherwise you can do that um, understand the concepts of the figure of speech what does it mean and then you can get the answers and the two marks questions are uh, two marks questions answers would be there you have to write down into five to six sentences each and um, for that i think i would suggest for poetry first you should you know uh, read the poetry twice twice and go for the summary if you uh, if you understand if you can understand the whole poetry it would be very easier for you to uh, memorize all the summary right and for that summary you can uh, 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 you can uh, create your own answer you can make your own, your own answers okay so we'll discuss the figure of speech here okay in the first answer now this poet this poem is uh, full of figure of speech and that is the reason i have divided i have uh, you know prepared this uh, stanza by stanza figure of speech so in the first stanza he talks in his vivid stripes few uh, the few steps of his cage on the pads of velvet quite in his quiet rage in this stanza first things that comes in our mind that is personification personification is a figure of speech where the non human things are treated as a human things are given the human qualities as i said earlier that here the tiger is personified as a human being and instead of it we have uh, the poet has used he look at the first word he stalks in his vivid stripes not a man there is no kind of man that there, there is no man here or he here refers to a tiger it an animal so it a tiger is personified as a human being okay next is metaphor now metaphor uh metaphor is a figure of speech uh, where the comparison of two things is implied comparison of two things is implied here what happens that tiger's paws are compared with velvet now velvet is as i told you that it is a fabric and here tiger's paws tigers uh these pads they are compared with the velvet so pads are very velvety that is what the poet says right so no the pads are not the, the pads haven't given uh, the pads are not as velvet uh the pads are uh, now here the poet uh, poet uh, didn't say that pads are as soft as velvet but what instead of it what poet has said that pads of velvet that means pads are made of velvet itself okay it is not soft that much uh, like as or like is not used directly the poet says that pads of velvet so that's the reason it is meta for not a simile don't uh mix up this two figure of speech metaphor and simile both in the both the fi- both figure of speech two things are compared to each other in simile we call uh, we use as or like to compare two things and in metaphor we directly call we directly compare each two things and we imply uh, the same meanings okay next enjambment enjambment it is a figure of speech where the sentence is continuing to the next line without any kind of punctuation it's very important without any kind of punctuation if sentence is continuing in the next line that means the uh, it is the example of the enjambment look at this stanza and the punctuation marks in the first stanza there is no punctuation marks in the second okay it has the punctuation third yes punctuation fourth 
फोर्थ यस सो द फर्स्ट लाइन इज कंटिन्यूइंग इन द सेकेंड लाइन दैट मीन्स फर्स्ट टू लाइन्स आर द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एंजामेंट got it so from he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage so these two lines are the example of enjambment because first line is continuing to the second line without any kind of punctuation okay next imagery now imagery is a figure of speech where the reader can uh where the poet tries to create an image okay through our five senses five senses okay to see to hear to smell to taste and to touch these five senses we have right and through these five senses if we get any kind of image that means it is the example of imagery figure of speech for example this look at these two lines he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage now we can see the image we can uh, we can uh, see that image the image comes in our mind that the tiger is stalking Uh, with his vivid stripes in that particular cage so we get the image of the tiger's movement in our mind so it is the example of imagery next is consonants now uh, generally people now generally students uh, get confused between this consonants and alliteration alliteration is not used here will come to uh, Uh, in this poem alliteration is used we'll talk about later now in consonants what happens that use of the same consonant sounds more than twice the use of same consonant sounds more than twice whether it is whether the sound is at the beginning of a word or the middle of the wo- uh, word or at the end of the word the place of the sound doesn't matter what matters is the same repeating sound consonant sound okay look at these lines he stalks in his vivid stripes now i have uh, italicized these words and the sounds as he stalks his vivid stripes now as is repeating more than twice in the same sentence whether it is in the beginning or and or uh, okay middle is not given here okay fine so the same sounds is repeating in the middle beginning or end of the word in the same line that is that means it's the example of consonants figure of speech next is assonance if consonants look at this word both are similar both sound same right consonants that means the use of uh, consonant sounds assonance that means the use of vowel sounds that is what left right so use of vowel sound whether it is in the beginning and or at any kind of place right same thing here i the uh, here okay i that means e right for example in his vivid stripes in the very first line in his e e vivid v e e stripes e sound is repeating more than twice so that is the reason it's the example of assonance next oxymoron now oxymoron is a figure of speech where the word two words of opposite meaning two words two contradictory words or two opposite words are used next next to each other meaning look at this word meaning that doesn't mean meaning that means it can be it, it is not like day and night only it can be morning and evening it can be day and evening understood the meaning of the word are opposite to each other and they are next to each other okay look at this word quiet ridge in the last line in his quiet ridge quiet means quiet means yeah 
yes noiseless so quiet means noiseless rage that means anger now anger can never be voice uh, noiseless it is always uh, bombarding with the words right flowing with the words so rage can't be quiet right so these two are opposite words these two are contradictory words and they are next to each other in the same line right so that is the reason it's the example of oxymoron now rhyme scheme i think uh, we learn how to uh, get the rhyme scheme of particular stanza again we'll discuss the same thing rhyme scheme in the rhyme scheme what we have to look we have to look at the last word of the each line okay now look at this word stripes cage quiet rage stripes cage quiet rage now if you have observed these two words are rhyming with each other cage rage cage rage they are rhyming with each other and these two words stripes quiet they are not rhyming with any of the, any of the word right so they are not rhyming words but still we have to hear uh, we have to mention the rhyme scheme here so first what we will do if the uh, the sounds the ending of this particular uh, the ending of this uh, the pronunciation of the word is different we will put different alphabet right alpha in alphabetical order only a b c d only right look at this word stripes now it is the new word of course we will put a first cage now it is not rhyming with stripes so we will put second alphabet that is b third look at this word quiet now it is not rhyming either with the stripes or with the cage so we will put c here now look at this la last word rage it is rhyming with cage now we have put b here b alphabet here so we will put the same alphabet here so our rhyme scheme would uh, would be a b c b a b c b got it next okay in the next stanza i mean in the second stanza first things that comes in our mind that is enjambment look at this second line first we have the punctuation so it is not the example of enjambment second it doesn't has the punctuation so it can be the example of enjambment next third here also no use of punctuation third it has but the second from second to third okay so these three lines si uh, sliding through long grass near the waste ho uh, water hole where plump deer pass so these are the uh, these three lines are the example of enjambment alliteration okay now comes alliteration now it is bit different different from uh, consonants how because in consonants what happens that uh, uh, use of same consonant whether it is in the same line whether it is at the beginning middle or at the end but here in the alliteration what we have to focus that the same sound same consonant sounds are repeating more uh, two times or more than two times but at the start at the beginning of the word then and then we can say it is the example of alliteration if you remember uh, i hope you guys know the tongue twister uh like uh, peter uh parry bought butter but the butter was bitter so parry bought uh, better butter to make bitter butter batter so this kind of tongue twister which are in which what happens the first sound first to sound of each word uh, uh has the same consonant sounds so that is what the tongue twister and these all the tongue twisters they are the example of alliteration but here if 
the same line has a more uh, two times or more than two times repetition of the same consonant sounds then we can say allit example of the alliteration look at this line last line <coughs> where plum deer pass pa pa plum pass pa pa same consonant sound is repeating okay two times they are repeating so it's the example of alliteration next imagery now here again we can uh, imagine the movement we can have the image of the tiger who is lurking in the shadow who is sliding through the long grass so we'll get the image of tiger so it is it up it's uh, our it catch our eyes catches this image okay so it is the image of uh, it is the example of imagery next rhyme scheme again shadow a grass okay it doesn't it doesn't rhyming with the shadow so we will put another alphabet next is hole it is again it is not rhyming with shadow either not even with this grass so we will put c here and pass now it is rhyming with this uh, second line grass so we will put the same alphabet which is used there so b is used there so again we will put p here so a b c b the rhyme scheme is a b c b okay the next stanza okay here again enjambment is used here look at this first and second line in the first line there is no use of punctuation in the second line we'll see this uh, comma so these two lines are example of enjambment he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge so these two lines are the example of enjambment next onomatopoeia the words which describes the sounds the words which denote the sounds these sounds uh, uh, these words are known as onomatopoeia boom smash third clap these are the uh, examples of onomatopoeia now look at this word snarling he should be snarling around houses now snarling is the uh, um uh, warning sounds of animal okay so snarling is a sound it denotes a sound particular sounds that means it's the example of onomatopoeia it's very easy right next is assonance use of same vowel sound more than twice that means it's a use of assonance okay here two uh, sounds are repeated first is u and second is e now look at this line uh, first line he should be snarling around houses now if you have observed should around houses right so u sound is repeating here so that is the reason it's a example of assonance now second sound that is e in this third line we'll get this uh we'll get this word bearing e he is e white e he is again e so e sound is repeating here so it's the example of assonance next is consonants use of consonant sound more than twice whether it is in the beginning and or middle <sighs> third line again his sound uh, consonant which sound is repeating here sir his fangs his claws sir sound is repeating okay rhyme school uh, rhyme scheme will remain the same i'm not going to repeat it again it is obviously a b c b b b y 2 b r here look at this word h village this both are Uh, both are rhyming with each other, each other. Okay, so A B C B. Next. Okay, so here again personification. He he is, right. The tiger is personified. The tiger is compared. Uh, tiger. 
has the given the quality of the human beings because he in the first line he is locked okay and he is stand he has even stand right it instead of it the poet has used he so that is the reason it see example of personification next assonance again use of vowel sound more than twice in the same line here e sound his locked concrete cell e sound right i have uh, italicized these words uh the sounds okay consonants use of consonant sounds here as sound is repeating in this lines his strength beneath bars so he is as he is here strength as bars sir sir sound is repeating more than twice next alliteration use of same consonant sound but at the beginning of the each word here look at this word uh in in the second line his strength behind bars so b sound is repeating behind bars b sound is repeating rhyme scheme would remain same here cell bars cage and visitors okay bars and visitors both are uh, be, uh, both are the rhyming words okay next Okay, the last stanza again. Enjambment where it is used. Okay, yes, in the third and the fourth line. Look at this word. No use of punctuation is here, right? In the fourth line, we can see full stop there. So the third line continues to this fourth line. So that's the why. That's the reason. It's the example of enjambment. and stars with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant uh, brilliant stars next assonance use of e sound okay where with his with his brilliant third line with his brilliant okay next alliteration use of same consonant sound at the beginning of the word he hears the voice at night he hears her her i have it italicized these words her her he hears okay rhyme scheme again it would remain the same a b c b okay here i have some task for you and that is the first task is that find the words that describes uh the movement and actions of the tiger whether it is in the cage or in the wild wild that means uh jungle or a forest okay so you have to find the words that describes the movement or the action okay movement or the action only whether it is in the cage or in the wild you have to classify these two things movement in the cage and movement in the forest second task is that you have to find out the words that describes two places places that means cage or a forest so you have to find out this uh, the words that describes these two things two places cage or a zoo or the forest i hope you understand the poem well thank you for watching guys have a nice day